Well, good morning, everybody. This is Charles Owen from Palette, and welcome to the user meeting for ACE, the virtual user meeting we're doing today for spring 2020. Yes, uh, everybody is uh, well aware that the uh, ACE meeting was canceled along with several others. And it's a kind of a somber day here today with all the restaurants and bars and other things closed. Uh, very interesting times we're in right now. I hope everyone is doing well and weathering the COVID-19 storm. We all hope and pray that it's short-lived so we can all get back to normalcy, I believe. Uh, in the meantime, Paladin will be here for you. We are here to support you and help you in any way that we can. We're uh, full staff here. All the troops are in full force and uh, ready to assist you. So with that said, let's go on and move into the presentation. Uh, very quick, uh, looks like uh, you're all hearing me okay. If you can just somebody prop up their hand there real quick and just let me know that you can hear and see me okay. All right, thanks Nathan, thanks others, appreciate it. So if you're hearing me, you're more than likely seeing my image as well as what's on the screen right now. So I'm looking at an audience view of the first slide. So let's continue. Thanks for your help, everybody. All right, so today what you'll learn about is uh, how to get in and see this new release and all the different features. There are several webinars that we've done in the past several months that incorporate these features and others. Talk about the new integrations as well as some of the new features and updates, which I'm really excited to talk about. And then we'll talk about and just revisit the fact that Microsoft Windows 7 is end of life. All right, to move into our first slide, we have a lot to cover here. So um, as always, if you get interrupted, customers come first. If you need to step out, feel free to do so. You can always download this presentation or watch it online uh, later after, after this, uh, this webinar uh, finishes. All right, so the winter release uh, information can be obtained inside the um, Paladin uh, Paladin help screen, so you can go to help on your uh, Paladin system at the top, and uh, you can look at the uh, information here under the help portal. And under there, if you click on the new features button, you'll see you can get right into this new release. There has been a webinar on this in the past as well. You'll see up in the top right-hand corner, there's a little movie icon up there. That tells you that there is another webinar that's associated to the subject matter that we're talking about on the slide. So if you just go and click new features, you'll find this information. All right, something else to talk about. And we also performed a webinar on this, as you can see the little movie icon in the top right hand corner. The industry support just got better, as in we have rolled out uh, the chat support to everybody. So everybody has access to this. Hopefully you've used it. Um, You've used it and you've been impressed with it. We have people standing by to take your questions. Obviously, if it's something that's going to require us to log in or do some more with you, uh, we'll go ahead or you can go ahead and, and uh, establish a case and we'll just reach out to you uh, over the phone. But it's a great feature. It's really good for quick questions that you want answered. So do utilize it. We're standing by to, to take your calls both online as well as over the phone. All right, talk about some of the new integrations. Now, many of you have this feature already. This is something that uh, ACE has been pushing as well. Pointy lets you kind of level the playing field with the big box stores. It brings you to front and center. When somebody's in your area and they're searching for different parts that you carry in your store, it can bring up your store as the place to go and make those purchases. So it's wonderful. Uh, it does position your store in some of the top search results through Google, and it's a tremendous advantage. Moving forward, we also have integration that we've we've pushed this out. It's now been running at a multi-store location for some time now. Worked out a few of the kinks, and uh, it is the Sage 50 cloud integration with Paladin. So at the end of the day, automatically, what happens is the general ledger information gets pushed to Sage. However, in real time, as you close purchase orders in Paladin, this will push over the invoices as an accounts payable in your Sage 50 cloud system. Now, the next slide also talks about new QuickBooks integration features. 
So this is particularly uh, pertaining to the QuickBooks Online or the cloud-based QuickBooks. Same information, this information, uh, just like Sage, is pushed over automatically at night. And also, as you close POs in Paladin, you can have those pushed over in real time to the accounts payable system in QuickBooks Online. Now, the PO piece is optional. You can turn that off if you're not interested in that particular uh, feature. This does work for multi-store as well. So I just wanted to, uh, that goes for both Sage and QuickBooks Online. Now, we still have the QuickBooks integration through Syntegration. This is different. That's the on-premise version. This is the new online version. Continuing on. So uh, this is a great opportunity for folks. Folks, if you aren't participating in rentals, there is a huge profit to be uh, to be gathered here and attained. It is uh, it's a great feature. We really are uh, pushing the the point of rental software because it seems to be the most reliable, the most ubiquitous out there. Um, they have a great product, great support, and we integrate with it. So it's perfect all the way around. So do uh, consider that. If you already have rental and you're using Paladin for the for the rental component because you're just doing a few here and there, that's fine. Uh, but this is if you're doing more than say, you know, 40, 50, 60% rentals, you're gonna need a full-fledged rental system and point of rental is a, is a wonderful option. All right, moving forward. Uh, again, this is uh, another feature that is uh, supported by ACE. It's a third party company called Deputy and they have a time clock system. So we've always been asked for an integrated time clock and now we have it, we do it through Deputy, but it's more than just a time clock. What it does is it interfaces with the information in Paladin. So if you passed historical um, peak times when your invoices are up and you, you require more, uh, more staffing, this will help you with the employee scheduling. If you're a large operation and you're still doing manual scheduling, you want to break that habit because this is a really, really cool product. So take a look at this if you're not already leveraging it. All right, moving forward. And last and um, not least, Easy Add is another device and uh, opportunity to uh, get your information out in front of your customers. So it syncs our POS data and displays the products in your store. All this is automatic. You can have it stream videos stream uh, prices of your products, items that you're pushing, all that is uh, is here. It also provides another kind of cool feature where your customers can um, not only see the in-store digital signage and videos and, and uh, that sort of thing, but they can uh, do price comparisons. So it's all from a single app. In addition to that, we've discovered that you can also use this as a price checking solution as well. So you can suppress all the prices of the surrounding stores and it can just look at the price of uh, the product in your store. So if you're not using this, I would consider this is another add-on that you can use to help get customers more interested and keep them interested in your store. All right, on to my favorite subject, which are new features and updates to move on. This again, top right hand corner, you'll see, and I've, you've probably seen this in the last several slides because we have the webinars have been uh, performed for many of the integrations, as well as this, sell by weight. So this is a scale. We have a couple of different ones that we offer, and this is wonderful if you're doing bulk products by weight, like nails and bolts and those types of things. It's also good if you're doing anything on, in the food industry. Uh, it's great for uh, other things as well. If you're sm selling anything from the smallest grams up to pounds, these scales are a tremendous feature that we've added recently. BOGOs, we also have a webinar on this as well. This is something that we've, uh, we've had out there for a while. It's probably been a year. I don't know if everybody's using it. I'm still pushing it because I think it's a tremendous opportunity for you to participate in one of the biggest customer draws, and that is the BOGO feature, buy one, get one. We have a wizard that's in Paladin. All you have to do is go to the, see the pricing plans. There's a advanced pricing plans checkbox. You check that, and it's gonna walk you through a wizard on how to do a buy one, get one, You know, buy any, get 50% off. I mean, there's just all different types of ways you can slice and dice this, and it's a wonderful feature. Give it a whirl if you haven't.
Moving on to email statements include charges itemized by product projects. So this is a tremendous tool for those contractors, independent contractors, as well as property managers that want to keep their apartments separate and things of that nature, where you can keep these projects uh, separated out as they, the customers come in and shop in your store. And at the end of the month, when you email their statements, it will produce this Excel spreadsheet that itemizes the transactions for that month uh, based on project, which gives you the subtotals. It's a, it's a great tool. A lot of contractors love this. Now, if you're doing a hard copy statement, it will not be printed out, but you can always go in to the customer module, click on see statements, click on, um, any one of the statements and it'll produce a, an Excel spreadsheet right then and there, which you can email or print out for somebody. Great solution. Next, we've uh, in, kind of added a new feature. It's the compar uh, comparative revenue report or the revenue report. And that is, you can now group departments. So before it was a department range, right? If you wanted departments one through five, you had to get one, two, three, four, and five. You wanted 10 through 20, you'd have to get all of them and all those in between as well. Well, now you can separate out in the department under file setup department on the far right hand side, there's a little box there that says group and you can assign a group ID. So if you want three departments in the same group, you just put group one for each of those departments. And then magically when you produce your comparative revenue report and you push that to Excel, because it's not with the PDF version, only with the Excel version, you will get a listing of all those different uh, uh, groups and department IDs. If you look at this Excel spreadsheet in the bottom, it starts with comparative revenue. So it does the regular revenue report in the first workbook. Second workbook is those that are undefined groups. And those that you have defined groups, I have a group two and a group seven, it will give you a workbook specifically for those. So this is great for tracking just a um, plethora of different departments that you want to combine together and leave out all the stuff in between. Moving on, auto print your orders. This has been a feature that's been asked for for a long time. We now automatically print yard orders. If you have yard order items in your invoice and you do not request a yard order or you don't have the automatically print yard orders activated, what will happen is it'll come up with a pop-up box and say, hey, attention, do you need a yard order? You've got yard order items in here and you didn't request a yard order, nor is it printing automatically. So it's a nice little, you've probably seen this already. This has been out uh, for a few months probably. Um, and you all know that yard orders must be printed at the time of purchase. That's why we make it, we kind of give you the uh, different uh, things so you don't, messages so you don't uh, bypass that opportunity. All right, moving forward, serialization. I'm happy to say that this is now active and activated for everybody. So you can go in and activate this under, I believe it's company tab under inventory. And if you don't have that, it's, it's gonna be downloaded soon. We're in the process of pushing that out this week and last week. So you should have access to activating this. Once you activate it, you go into each of those inventory items and you click the box serial number. You click that serial number checkbox, and now every time you receive a product and every time you sell one of these products, it's going to mandate that a serial number is assigned to both the buying and selling process. You can do unique serial numbers. Um, they're enforced for each serialized item, but you can do m multiple of same serial numbers across different products, of course. And we also support the multi store. Uh, transfer where it transfers the serialized items as well. So uh, we're going to talk about a little bit more right here, track serial numbers. This is a screen that is uh, when you're receiving PO, it's going to give you an opportunity to put in serial numbers and it's not going to let you um, actually receive this, finally receive this order until you satisfy those serial numbers. Looking at the inventory screen on the general tab. Notice on the right hand side where it says stock on hand, there's a little yield sign with an exclamation point. That's a warning sign. If you click on that, it will open up this box that you see right here on the screen. 
And it's going to track and let you enter all uh, serial numbers that, that aren't satisfied. Now, in this case, I have 20 on hand. I have no serial numbers assigned. So it says in red, in the very center of the screen, add 20 serial numbers to match inventory. Now, if you had 10 already in there, it would show you those 10 and say, add 10 serial numbers to match the inventory. So we're trying to make it square between, you know, line up the fact that you have this many items, you have this many serial numbers, they have to match up. For example, if you have too many serial numbers, it will also show this warning box. So um, be cognizant of this. Um, it's okay when you first activate serial, serialization and you click the serial box, you're going to see this appear because instantly you're not gonna have any serial numbers in the system. So you can at your leisure go through and add these, but be forewarned, before you can sell it, you actually have to provide a serial number. So if you haven't had a chance yet to assign serial numbers, but you've clicked the box at the sales opportunity when you're in invoicing, it'll come up and say, add a serial number. And at that point, the cashier can either scan or type in that serial number that's on that product. Looking at it a little bit deeper. Oh, going back one screen, I also want to mention on this box in the center, there's a couple of different buttons off to the right there, add, edit, remove, and then there's view in Excel and history. We're going to show you the, um, well, I'm not going to show you either of these reports, but the history report is kind of cool because what it does is it actually looks at everything and tracks cradle to grave. You know, when this thing came in, when it went out, what happened in between, if it was it ever stored and on hold or a quote, was it ever in process and then canceled? It tracks every state or event for that particular serialized item. So that's really, really nice feature. And then view in Excel just gives you a list of all the available and sold serial numbers. Moving on, this is right at checkout. So at checkout, you can see here, it says uh, enter one or select one serial number from the part numbers below. And all you do at this point is select whatever serial number matches the product that you're selling, select that and hit finished and you're done. And now you can sell the item. If you try to sell it without assigning a serial number, it will not let you complete the transaction. So again, this is uh, fully enforced on the receiving side and on the selling side. One of the reports that we did also was a view of all sold versus available serialized products for every group of product or specific groups. So you go into the track serial numbers, it's um, under the inventory and the report section. It will let you see the uh, available serial numbers and sold serial numbers um, for your entire store or specific products. Moving on off of serialization, we have uh, the capability to edit the quantity and price on a sent PO. We've shown this before. I think it's important to show it again because a lot of people call me and say, hey, I can't change the cost to receive. I mean, I can change it, but it doesn't save. Well, that's because you're probably trying to change it right on the screen where to make the change and make it stick, you have to do a right click hovering over the item that you want to select and select the the command update PO order quantity and cost. And then it will stick when you save that PO. Now this is only for POs that you've already sent, that it, this is required. And not sure why you would change anything after you've sent the order, but in some cases when you get alerts that you wanna change it before you receive it, you have the opportunity to do just that. All right, moving on. We're 19, into, 19 minutes into this presentation, and um, I think we're going to end up right about our 25 or so minutes. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there. There's a lot of material to cover here. So this one particular feature is one you've already seen. If you've been using Paladin and you do anything with ordering product, you're gonna have already seen this, this come up. This has been in the product for a while, but I think it uh, warrants talking about it again. If you generate a purchase order and you do not assign a supplier, it will ask you a question. Do you want to split it? And it says based on lowest supplier cost, but that's the next version or next uh, part two that we'll talk about. If you just take the RF gun and walk your store, for example, and hit multiple product lines, it's going to go ahead and split the PO based on this, who's ever in supplier position number one. If you wish to break it up, you can choose not to. 
But when you break it up, it'll break it up to in however many supplier ones are assigned to those items that you're ordering. In this case, on the right-hand side, it says this PO has been split successfully into 19 different individual POs which doesn't necessarily correspond to my next screen, which is shown in the example of if you had just two suppliers. So if you had two suppliers that were split up, it would take your original purchase order and it breaks it up to supplier A on the top right, supplier B on the bottom right. And that just shows you that it in fact broke it up. On the recall transaction screen, it will show the original PO and then it will say split PO for supplier A and supplier B. So it indicates what has happened. You can go ahead and remove the split working purchase order if you like, um, just to clean it out because you don't necessarily need it at this point. We just save it there as a backup. Now, what is part two? So part two gets a little bit more interesting. Part two is, is kind of cool because we track, if you have multiple EDIs, electronic data interchange, meaning we're ordering, and receiving invoices from your suppliers, and we do this for multiple suppliers, there's an opportunity where order analyst will go ahead and display to you and push into the, the push to order that product from the lowest cost EDI supplier. So this was um, asked for us from several customers. Uh, most of the suppliers that are out there, the vendors that are out there, they support this function because they're fairly confident that they're going to have for the most part, the best prices, particularly if you're there uh, or if they're your uh, number one supplier and primary supplier. But the same thing is going to ask you that question again. Do you want to split the PO based on lower cost? And what it's going to do is it's going to look up all the suppliers in for each of those items. And it's going to look at the market cost. Now, the market cost cannot just be randomly entered in manually. This information must come from an EDI transaction. Now, it's irrelevant if you're just hand keying things in. If you're, um, if you're running EDI on a daily or weekly basis, that means the information's being updated all the time. As you know, with the tariffs and everything else, costs are changing over, you know, daily. So we want to maintain the exact or as close to the, to the accurate price, price as possible. And that's what we do here. All right, moving on. To the next subject, which is the right-click search feature. So we have, uh, if you're in invoicing and you've discovered the right-click button on your mouse, it's really nice because it lets you do a lot of things. We've added yet another feature. Actually, we've added a couple since my last webinar. The search feature, if you've got an invoice that has, in this case, 115 different line items, and you want to find one specific item, you just right-click, Hit the search invoice and quote, type in either a part number or description or any part thereof, and it will go to that item in the invoice. Very, very fast way to select it. Now we've also added, as you can see down below, add serial number that was added, um, as well as weigh item. So we can do that um, also on the, using the right click feature. All right, and then of course everything up above. And as of late, you probably haven't seen this. The one under footage, footage calculator is square footage calculator. We've added that one. And to get to either the footage or square footage calculator, it's control K or control S. Moving on to new inventory items report. So this is a kind of a handy thing. It lets you produce a historical report for all those new inventory items. And in this case, um, we've got a report that goes from March 7th to March March 13th, and it shows the different part numbers that have been received in that period of time. So it's a good list. It's a good report. Lots of people use this and find it uh, very useful. All right, bin tags. We've added multiple different styles. All I want to press here is go to that LTSR catalog in your um, Paladin uh, web portal and help portal. LTSR is just the word you need to search for. Then you click on catalog and there's a 40 to 50 page document that shows you every single bin tag, tag style. Um, also shelf tags, item tags, uh, sales tags, sales signs, reports, and other things. So take a look at that if you don't do that on a regular basis. Something else that just came out, I'm super excited about, 
is those of you who want to, who manage a lot of quotes and want to number your, your uh, quotes, we are now offering that feature in the system. So for all quotes, it will go ahead and assign a quote number um, both to the invoice as well as uh, on the screen and invoicing on the top line. Moving on, automated ACE pricing plans. So we know ACE pricing plans have been automated, right? You've been getting, um, you've been getting the get credit for value, the instant savings, dynamic promotions. Those are all automatically input based on the hot sheets that come down from ACE. This will actually automatically uh, activate your pricing plans, if you wish, for red hot buys and uh, anything in the circulars. So this will cover fully what you need to do. So if you want this feature, you need to activate it in your EDI and it will automatically activate those pricing plans. Previously, as you know, it brings down sale lists and then you create the pricing plan and set your own start and stop dates. In this case, it will do it for you. Order management system. So the, the new ACE OMS is, uh, is now supported with Paladin. It has been since uh, the day it was available. So if you've been hearing about this, it's totally transparent to you. You won't see any changes in Paladin. It's just the way that we communicate with ACE. All right, some of the exciting stuff here. What's coming in the future? Well, this we had at some of the last mo most recent shows. It is a device that is an all-in-one device about the size of a phone, and it enables you to have a built-in barcode scanner, signature capture, EMV-enabled credit card reader, uh, touchscreen, Bluetooth printer connectivity, and contactless payments. This is a device that you can use for checkout. So this is mobile checkout version two. It does require this particular device. We will be offering this as of May. So uh, stay tuned if you guys want a line buster or you want to take this device and pack up the back of your, your truck and take it to a flea market or swap meet, you can charge and uh, take credit cards and everything else from this device and it registers it as a, um, a purchase from the mobile device, but in your store. So decrements inventory, you can look up your customers on here. You can put a uh, count payments on here. So not, not account payments, but um, you can use uh, account, the, the house accounts to, to do charges. You can also do checks as well as cash, as well as um, credit card. So great device. All right, moving forward, advanced lookup image viewer. So this will be coming shortly. This uh, is something that we've been wanting for a while. And when you do a advanced lookup, you're going to have an option to look at the photograph of the item, and there'll be a little magnifying glass to the left of that item that will show you the product. You just click on that, and you got a full view of a high-resolution product. In addition, uh, COD for delivery. So those delivery, folks that are doing delivery, you know you have to charge it to a customer before it leaves your store, right? In this case, you do not have to set up a customer as a credit customer, it can be credit limit zero. And what it will do is it will identify it as a COD payment, but if for some reason somebody forgets to uh, take a payment when they're out on the delivery, it will show up on a statement at the end of that month. So everything's accountable, but no longer do you have to set up a customer, pre-set up a customer as a charge account customer. It can be a charge limit of zero. So it's a great, great feature. All right, and then of course, uh, Windows 7 end of life. Um, just wanna remind everybody, if you've got Windows 7 machines out there, um, you're not as protected as you can be. We're encouraging everybody to either upgrade to Windows, upgrade to Windows 10 or, or buy new computers. If you've had computers for longer, longer than four or five or six years, it's probably a good opportunity to start swapping those out with Windows 10 machines. We can help you with that. All right, so I'm going to do some q and A. I see some questions here already. Um, looks like uh, Nick asked a couple of questions, and you, you do it just by going down below where you click on um, questions, and uh, or you can chat them to me, but questions works. Can the cashier scan the serial number to add the invoice to the invoice? Yes, of course. Um, the serial number must be in a barcode format, but yes, you can scan that, absolutely. 
or it can be in a, uh, if you have a 2D scanner and it's in a, um, a different format than a standard barcode, for example, a QR code, it will work as well. Can the serial number be added, updated via the RF unit? No, unfortunately, the RF unit does not support that feature at this time. Our, another question from Janet, are most of the new features for multi-store uh, as well? Yes, all these features also work for multi-store. Nathan, uh, will mobile checkout support customer pricing plans? Good question, and I am happy to say absolutely yes, it will. So it will support customer-specific pricing plans or trade discounts. Yes, we do support that on this device. Um, that's all the questions I have, but I'm going to hang out here a little bit more. I want to mention to you that the next webinar talks about our integration with Excel, and uh, that will be on March 31st at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And it looks like uh, there's no more questions. So I just want to remind everybody that, you know, go check out this winter release. It's in the help screens from uh, in the Paladin portal. Also, if you want to watch this web webinar again or you want to have other uh, members of your store watch it, they can do that just by going to portal.paladinpos.com slash webinars. And they can do that from anywhere. It doesn't have to be from the um, – doesn't have to be from within the Paladin application. All right, listen, guys, hang in there. We're all going to get through these uh, these strange and in interesting times. I appreciate the time that you've uh, dedicated today to watch this webinar. I hope it was helpful for for you. Until next time, signing off. Have a great day and God bless. <laughs>